friends i am ram murla search for me on linkedin or on twitter xpindias follow me on both i am sorry apologies for not being able to publish my video yesterday today i'll be discussing a bit of mathematics before jumping into regression analysis using machine learning so we will be doing a regression laboratory uh, uh, using python and i will see if we can do the same with r having said that let's do a bit of math once again i apologize for not being able to post my video as promised yesterday because of my unexpected busy work schedule before understanding what is regression we need to understand one important aspect of the regression analysis which is called relationship it is very very important aspect within the so we do have an issue and we need to understand what is the relationship between two different variables or number of variables and we need to visualize and resolve the issue so how do you do that first of all to understand how do we do that we need to understand what is regression analysis regression analysis first of all to dis before discussing anything about regression analysis there are there are two kinds of regression analysis anyway simple linear regression analysis which will be uh, uh, calculated between two variables multiple regression analysis will be calculated between more than two variables okay don't panic do not panic i will explain to you about these two kinds of things but we will discuss more about simple linear regression uh, uh, involving single independent variable and single dependent variable okay so what is a dependent variable what is a independent variable for example you want to buy a house you need to buy if you want to buy a house you need to pay money to buy the house so the cost of the house is always a dependent variable so it is dependent on some number of factors so the cost of the house is dependent on something called independent variable which is the independent variable the independent variable is the cost per square feet so for example the house is of 2000 square foot square feet it will cost something the 2000 square feet have will have to be multiplied by some let's say for example 75 dollars per square feet so 2000 square feet multiplied by 75 dollars is 150 thousand dollars right very good but if you the house has to be built on a piece of land right so we have not added that piece of land cost because the land will not be coming to you free of cost so the piece of land the cost related to that piece of land is called offset price so the dependent variable here is the cost of the house while the independent variable is the house cost per square foot plus a offset price which is the cost of the land because house cannot be built on the thin air right so this is a classical example of simple linear regression 
okay so multiple linear regression we will discuss this about this a little later we need to understand couple of other things first of all we need to understand what is a scatter plot and we need to understand what is a correlation analysis before jumping into actual regression analysis so a scatter plot is nothing but a graph drawn between the values of dependent variable and the independent variable so for example the house is built on uh, one house the first house is built on 500 square feet second house built on 1000 square feet third house built on 1500 square feet fourth house is built on 2000 square feet right so the cost will be as per the calculation which i have given earlier so we need to draw a graph between this cost of the house to the square based on the square feet plus a base value so that graph is called a scatter plot we will discuss about this scatter plot a little more detail in coming slides now we need to understand what is a correlation in the slide number one we have discussed about something called relationship and i have said that relationship the strength of the relationship is very very important in the regression analysis so the correlation analysis is nothing but identifying the strength of the relationship having said that today in our class we are only concerned with the strength of the relationship nothing else so we will predict certain values based on the laboratory uh, in coming few days and uh, we will not be so accurate because the reason we are not so accurate because we are not actually looking at the causes of the predictions if we have taken that then the efficiency or the uh, uh, or the uh, uh, accuracy of the prediction will be more but right now for the simplicity sake we are only concerned about strength of the relationship before jumping into linear regression we we will be looking at three different pictures here the first picture is to do with if you look at the uh, the line which is drawn between the scatter plot is a straight line if you look at here it is a curved line and if you look at here there is no way we can draw, draw a line here right so the first one the relationship is a linear relationship which is more trustworthy the second picture is a non-linear relationship because the line is a uh, looks like a hyperbola it's a curved line so we cannot trust the line here there are other ways to identify how to establish the relationship but right now it is out of our scope and even here it is not in our scope at this point of time so we are going to discuss only about this graph we are not going to discuss about these two kinds of analysis because we have to first understand the linear relationships then we will discuss about non-linear relationships and uh, lack of relationships and how to predict if there is a lack of relationships and all these kind of things in future right so let us look at the next slide for example i want to show you some scatter plots right this is one scatter plot 
it is a positive scatter plot and the second scatter plot is a negative scatter plot this is a positive one this is a negative one and if you look at this thickness between these things it is considerably narrow considerably narrow right and if you look so what we call this a strong relationships if the thickness the thickness between these two things is smaller as thin as possible then it is for example look at here the thickness is high is a positive scatter plot and the thickness here is also very high so this kind of relationships are called weak relationships so here it is strong relationship here it is weak relationship so in the weak relationship it is difficult for us to predict accurately so the confidence levels on this kind of weak relationship size very low the confidence levels on this kind of strong relationships is considerably high so if you can reduce if you can reduce the what do you call uh, uh, thickness as much as possible that is high confidence here the thickness is very heavy so the low confidence so strong relationships we can predict the values future values much more easily with high level of confidence with the weak relationships it is not possible to predict that uh, uh, easily okay so let us the next slide so uh, examples of approximate r values right r is nothing but the relationship value or we also call it as a residual value the residual value are uh, uh, is in the first one is a negative one minus one this is also a negative one see the, the slope is like this and here it is horizontal so the r is zero here and this is positive here because the because the uh, uh, relationship uh, value the relationship is increasing not decreasing here the r is the line is actually touching each and every point of the graph so the confidence level is one so r is equal to the confidence level confidence level here is minus one so basically the line is touching each and every point here right so that means the confidence level is minus one that means it is uh, with the x value increasing the y value the cost will reduce here as the x value is increasing as x value is increasing the cost is increasing right so we will discuss a little bit more on these things later but right now i hope you understood the how the negative values and positive values came into picture anyway as i said earlier right so as i said earlier As I said earlier, uh, let us discuss about the, you know, these are the values of the home sales price. Uh, it is based on the square feet as well as the age of the house. So there are two independent variables and the market value is the dependent variable. So if you look at the scatter plot, so right now we, in this particular uh, thing we are not looking at age we are only looking at the square feet and the market value so x is a square footage and y is the market value so this is a simple example a classic example of simple linear regression 
If we have taken this as well, then it will become multiple linear regression, but multivariate linear regression. But let's not worry about it at this point of time, right? Very good. So now, you know, this is, these are the different plots, right? Based on the values that we have seen earlier. So two possible lines are shown. So basically, this particular line, right? This particular line touches many points, plots that are there while this particular line doesn't touch a lot of points, so one or two points. So which one out of these things is correct? So A is correct, B is not accurate. So the, the more the, the more scatter points the line touches, the more confidence level we'll be having on the predictions. The less number of points that line touches, the less uh, confidence level the line uh, we will be having so anyway here this is the formula for this particular one right y is the cost of the house beta 0 is the basic price if you look at the and this, these things actually these things actually started somewhere there. They did not start here, right? So, if you look at this, right? It it did not start at zero. It started at yeah, right? So there is a basic value. The base value is beta zero, right? And the beta one is multiplied. Beta one is nothing but x multiplied by cost per square foot dollar let's say 75 right, just an example right so let's say if it is 2000 square feet it is going to be 150000 right so plus the basic value let's say about 50000 plus 150000 this 2000 square feet home will be costing us uh, two hundred thousand dollars. Why? Because there is a base value beta zero is fifty thousand dollars, right? So when we look at this, right, the basically the base value. This is the base value fifty thousand pounds. The value multiplied by this number of square feet number of square feet is this and this is the value so basically it is a positive relationship and the positive relationship goes like this a negative relationship goes like this if for example per se uh, it will never happen but in case if it happens okay if the mm, amount of uh, square footage increases if the cost of the house comes down, then it is negative value. With the increment of the independent variable, if the cost a dependent variable gets reduced, then it is negative value, right? I'm sure that is what you understood till now. Very good. So let us look at the next one, right? So earlier, I told you about two different things. One is bivariate and multivariate model. Bivariate model, for example, education per income, square footage, cost of the house. Right? Multivariate, for example, uh, uh, some people are in, uh, uh, employed in an organization and, they, and their incomes are dependent variable and the uh, education is a independent variable same thing okay where just education and income when they are compared uh, without any other thing then it is bivariate and if it is these are all the things but for example 
men will have certain salaries women will have certain other salaries experience if i have 27 years experience i will have more salary than you uh, if you have less experience then you will be having less salary if i am older i might be having less salary if you are younger with my qualifications you will be having more salary and if you are educated well enough you will have more salary and all these kind of things right so and one more thing that we need to learn about these simultaneous relationships for example if the price of wheat let us say is increasing from time to time in delhi government uh, while congress government was there price of onions increased and because price of onions was were, was increasing the onions production has increased and because onions production has increased price of onions have reduced so basically there is a bi-directional relationship if you look at here there is only one directional relationship here but here also there is only one directional relationship here but here between the price of wheat to quantity of wheat produced there is a bi-directional relationship i will show you again let me take this off so if you look at the uh, the education and income it is unidirectional more income doesn't mean that you have better education but better education always means that you have better income in this case better education fairer sex more experience better more age and all these things are dependent but income doesn't make you a woman our man income doesn't make you better educated or less educated income doesn't make you more experienced or less experienced income doesn't make you more aged or less aged but in this case price of wheat might impact or influence quantity of wheat produced but the quantity also the increase or decrease of the quantity also will impact or influence the price of wheat so this is a bi-directional so you need to understand very very thoroughly about these kind of relationships without understanding these kind of relationships it is very very difficult for you to understand about machine learning please 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 listen to me and you have to follow this you have to have business common sense when we are learning the machine learning artificial intelligence and uh, 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 statistical courses right see that's an example can you see something strange here so this is number of hours per week how many hours per week they can be so if a person is working for eight year eight hours then no, five days an hour a week so then maximum you can have 40 hours uh, there's no 40 hours anywhere but 45 hours 50 hours uh, if somebody is working 24 by 7 so multiplied by uh, 7 24s is uh, sorry is equal to uh, 24 hours in seven days is 7 fours are 28 7 twos are 1468 hours see here there are 200 hours per week so these are called outliers that means there is data however this data is erroneous so these are called outliers right so this is outlier data okay so when you are doing the machine exercises you need to understand the data as i always tell my students you have to read the data multiple times you have to look at the data 60 percent of a data scientist job is to look at the data think about the data understand the data nothing else rest of the 40 percent is to apply the 
uh, algorithms on the data and what kind of algorithms have to be applied and all these things will be based on what kind of data you have and what kind of postulations you can diff, uh, apply on this and derive using this data that is what you will be learning right very good so as i said outliers right rare extreme values may distort the outcome it could be an error or it could be an important observation uh, in the previous slide it is not an important observation it is an error simple error so and sometimes the outliers could be a very important observation a person who has worked 24 hours 7 168 hours a week it's much possible uh, that person might be attempting for a Guinness Book of World Records. Now, you never know. So there could be some outliers. There could be some legal, legitimate outliers. But you have to be watchful on those outliers. And those outliers cannot be used to, those outliers cannot be used to uh, do the uh, machine, uh, artificial intelligence postulations. So outliers are always a no-no for machine learning outliers are no-no for a model because models always will have to follow a certain set of criteria okay if something is going out of the criteria for example somebody wants to work for 60 hours a week and uh, uh, and the government legislation will not let uh, a british government legislation for example will not let anybody to work beyond 48 hours a week if somebody is working for more than 48 hours a week the employer will be subjected to the fine or a punishment so you have to understand why there are outliers and is this a problem and if you have a problem you have to remove these outliers so generally an outlier is a thing is considered as an outlier if uh, you know you, I'm, I'm sure most of you know what is a standard devi deviation if you do not know about a standard deviation please go and read okay just do a google search and standard deviation you will understand it's very simple okay so let us consider an example in year 1990 this is two variables right 19 year and uh, number of people per car so in year 1980 on an average there are six people per car because there are no regulations rules and regulations those days and people used to get into cars like eight people ten people six people seven people three people two people whatever it is right on an average uh, occupants per car especially this is true in india i'm sure a lot of people would have seen in an ambassador car there i know i have seen people eight people getting into a car right so in year 1980 there are about an average six people per car used to be occupied in 1990 uh, because the number of cars have increased on the roads on an average there are about six three people per car and in 2000 on an average there are one and a half people per car so what is the observation here the observation here is by year 2010 every fourth car will have nobody in it <laughs> what is this is this a legitimate uh, postulation theoretically yes it is pretty much uh, possible but practically it is not right so food for thought kind of mathematical relationship between year and average number of cars per year why might relationship break down by 2010 is it valid theoretically as i said it is valid 
but practically it is not valid because you can't drive a car without you being inside so if you are inside at least one person is there in the car so by but the postulation as per this postulation every fourth car will not have anybody in it which is wrong so like real life examples if you use more fertilizer more yield of a vegetable or corn or rice paddy or whatever right so if you spend more money uh, your income will be uh, more if you spend more money on the advertisements your income will be more drug dosage if you increase your drug doses blood high uh, blood pressure levels are low daily temperature uh, as uh, the increase of daily temperature natural gas demand will come down change in minimum wage uh, for example minimum wage is high unemployment rate also will be high vice versa right so you have to understand very very clearly what is the relationship for example uh, let's say uh, a vegetable let's take a vegetable right if you are growing the vegetables generally uh, you, there will be a dosage of the fertilizer you have to apply to the plants or the vegetable right so uh, let's say per acre 5 kilograms of fertilizer uh, which will cost about 20 dollars you apply 200 dollars worth of vegetables so if you add 6 kilograms probably 215 kilograms of but vegetables might be but if you add 25 kilograms all the vegetable plants or vegetable trees will die on the spot right so you have to be watchful about the outliers okay so you need to understand the business fundamentals of each one of these things then only you can do the data science so that is the reason whenever i see whenever i talk to people i always say business knowledge is the most important thing if you don't have the business knowledge please don't even think about uh, getting into data science if you don't have the business knowledge start learning uh, uh, how to do the uh, business and then you can actually come back to data science so we need to draw the line right so when we look at uh, previously we looked at the uh, what do you call uh, yeah uh, we looked at the uh, the house price calculation right beta 0 plus beta multiplied by beta 1 multiplied by x1 x1 is the slope so what is the residual so you have this line and these are all the plots the points where the house prices are right and uh, all the points underneath the line that we have drawn are called negative residuals all the plots that are there on the top of the line are called positive residuals so if you want to identify a residual for example here let's say here so this is the predictive residual while the actual residual is this so the residual is nothing but the error is equal to y1 yi this is actual residual minus the predicted residual which is depicted by y hat or y cap is the So, is the this is the basic residual you need to understand so if you have any questions about the residual please do ask me questions uh, i will uh, be happy to uh, come back to you with more clear example right so Anyway, uh, this is about 
churn analysis, uh, which we will discuss about tomorrow. Uh, I will be discussing about churn analysis and uh, uh, the churn analysis uh, using the simple regression we'll be doing. It. Thank you. Have a great day. Take rest. It is about 35 minutes video. I don't want to go beyond 30 minutes per class. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.